Alright hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to Apple Weekly number 50 on the 1st of January 2012. Happy New Year. Hope you guys and gals have a fantastic New Year ahead. Fantastic few years ahead, shall I say. Uh, we're at number 50, half century, 1st of January. This has been in the planning for ages to get a half century on the first day of the year. But anyways, this is a show where I cover everything Apple, talk about what's going on in the past few days, get some discussion going on, feel free to leave any comments, abuse, video responses are welcomed and if you're watching on iTunes then you, if you can leave some sort of rating in the review section, you sir would be a legend. The first and most recent Apple news coming out this week is in relation to the second generation Apple TV. Guess what? It has been hacked and this hack is Pretty interesting, um, you know the Apple TV is priced you know pretty reasonably, but it adds more function this hack, and it's not publicly available at the moment, and it's not looking likely if it's going to go to public at all. Two guys, two developers messing around, they created this hack, and basically you can run iOS apps on your Apple TV. How amazing is that? Apple TV, the third generation, a lot of rumours going on. What's happening? Will we see it this year or not? You know, there was always talk of an app store for the Apple TV um, and Steve Jobs, the man himself, said when the time is right, there will be an app store for Apple TV. And, you know, these two developers messed around with the software, managed to get iOS apps running in full 720p or the full high definition, no issues whatsoever. They ran films, they ran Safari. The video is on the screen, click on the annotation or if you're watching on iTunes, simply just insert this link into your Safari, Firefox or Internet Explorer. How dare you? iPad 3, iPad 3, iPad 3 is what we've been hearing for the past week, week and a half. A lot of rumours, a lot of reports, a lot of analysts have uh, been kind of saying we're going to see iPads in January this month. How insane would that be? Imagine all the people who've just bought an iPad for Christmas only to find out three weeks later a friggin' new one's coming out. That report has been demolished, it's been kicked right up where it dropped down from. That said, there's been many leaks and many parts being appearing on Chinese and Japanese and Taiwanese websites and as such this retina display is apparently heading towards the iPad 3. Not only that, but they're saying there's going to be two versions of the iPad 3 and we've talked about this in the past as well where you're going to see a low-end iPad and a high-end iPad. Are they going to make the iPad 2 cheaper once the 3 comes out? Or is it going to be merely be an iPad 2S? I hope not, um, but you know, could that be an option? Is the next upgrade going to be really significant? There's talks of double battery life or beastly battery life, which is something I would welcome. Something that would make your iPad charge a bit faster would be nice, because I tell you what, Via USB, it takes ages. Tell you what though, a Thunderbolt charging device would be amazing, wouldn't it? Just saying, just saying. Next up, this is a pretty interesting story actually. Face detection for iOS and MacBooks and Macs. How amazing would that be? So, patently Apple, who kind of look at Apple patents that have been published or talk about everything legal and everything Apple has applied for in the patent world. And this patent, the way it's going to work is that when you put your iPhone in front of you, it's going to unlock the screen so you don't have to manually, physically, you know, use your fingers. I mean, that is quite tiring, isn't it? It literally takes, you know, so much energy to do that. But it's just the whole thing of making the user experience even more easier. You're taking your phone out your jacket or your pocket, wherever. You don't need to do that. Just simply look at it. Then there's you know a lot of dynamics as well as to how close you're going to have to be, and Apple, you know, while this technology is not new, it's kind of been out there, face detection and so on. But it's the way Apple tend to implement it. They see what's kind of out there and make it better, make it more friendly. Uh, so the way like touch screens have always, have always been out in the market, but Apple just went ahead and done it even better because it was just so smooth with the scrolling and stuff. Could they do the same with the face detection? Do you have to have your Mac literally right up to your face to wake it up from sleep? What angle do you have to hold the iDevice or your Mac at? Um, there's not been much information or much details, but I'll leave the article in the description because um, this, you know, when are we going to see it? I'm, I'm thinking more, most probably come the next version of 
OS 10 or OS 11 or whatever they're gonna call it. But in any case, I mean, looks quite interesting. Can't say too much on it yet until, of course, we actually use it. Then again, you know, Apple patent a lot of stuff and we hardly see it in the field. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we will see this implemented because it does look, you know, pretty nice. Imagine not having to type in your password, you know, after you've got screensaver security enabled. Um, and it's going to be using your face or the tone texture of your face, the positioning of it. Next up, their story some of you are probably going to be sitting here for MacBook Pros, iMacs, when are they going to be refreshed and so on. Good news, Intel is going to be reportedly releasing the next chipsets, Ivy Bridge, on April the 8th, 2012. These are highly likely going to be in the next Macs, and before then, there's no chance there's going to be any Macs. So it's going to be the 8th of April or soon after is when we're going to see the refreshed MacBook Pros and so on. Now, the Ivy Bridge chipsets are pretty beastly. They're much faster than Sandy Bridge CPUs, which are currently uh, found in MacBooks and iMacs and so on. Of course, it's going to be new technology, so you would expect it to be faster. 25% overall beastness over the current ones. Better, you know, battery life, which is, you know, always welcomed. Remember, this Ivy Bridge chipset was meant to come out in the first early quarter of 2012, but it was delayed, and DigiTimes reportedly says April the 8th is most likely going to be the date when we're going to see it. So could Apple pull off some sort of really cool agreement where they release it a week before or a couple of weeks before, but imagine what the other manufacturers are going to feel like. The faces aren't going to be too pretty. So it's going to happen on 8th of April, uh, so hopefully we'll see refreshed MacBooks you know, around that time, or iMac, so I've been getting a lot of questions on the MacBook Pros when they're going to get refreshed and so on. Remember, last year in 2011, the major MacBook Pro refresh we've seen was on the February 24th, uh, which was Steve Jobs' birthday, so uh, it's highly unlikely we're going to see the same refresh of the MacBook Pros. Could we see new iPads or other gadgets by Apple to kind of, you know, mark uh, the occasion, the birthday? Who knows? Uh, but MacBook Pros, highly unlikely on February, March, it's most probably going to be April, so fingers crossed. And just to finish off some small stories, Jonathan Ive has been awarded a knighthood in the UK, so now he can put the title Sir before his name, and it's just a kind of whole status thing, and it looks cool, and you're regarded as a, you know, VIP, pretty much. Phil Schiller, when he heard of this, he, you know, posted a link of this BBC article. He wasn't the only one, there's many more, and of course Jonathan Ive is you know, the design guru at Apple, he was kind of really closely linked to Steve Jobs, they were, you know, they got on really well. Uh, Steve Jobs' biography, Jonathan I was pretty high up in the chain, uh, and he had access to pretty much anything. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool that that's um, happening. Also, there's going to be more Apple retail stores coming this year, not a surprise. They've got 357 at the moment, but what's special about these ones coming this year is that they're going to be kind of historic, like the one you find in London Covent Garden, you know, old building, bricks, magical, like the one you've got in Grand Central Station, which was recently opened. So more of these coming in Canada and Germany, so if you stay in these countries, um, you know, good for you, I guess. And last but not least, Apple was giving out hoodies for the holiday season to its employees. I'm not too sure if retail store employees got it, or was it just the Cupertino HQ employees that got it. It was a hoodie, Apple logo on it, and uh, right after when people got them, they got stuck up on eBay and they were fetching for about two, three thousand dollars. Most likely they're going to be fake bids. But, uh, you know, you'd wouldn't you want to rather go and get an eye gear jacket? Just saying, just saying, you know. But guys, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Any comments, abuse, video responses, you know, feel free to leave them below. Remember, you can join me on twittercom region where I post random stuff throughout the day or throughout the week. Don't worry, I won't spam your timeline. Facebook.com slash iGlassRegion. And guys, I shall see you, hopefully, in the next video next week. Cheers.